So as I'm sure many of you have heard by now or seen Horizon Forbidden West reviews are here and many of the major news outlets and YouTubers have had close to two weeks with the game before posting their final thoughts online. And while it's a great idea to read upon any of these reviews for a full view over what the game is and isn't, a much better solution is for all of the reviews and opinions to be taken into account. At the very least, that is my opinion. I basically spent the past half a day reading upon every single review from the most reputable sources that I could find on Horizon Forbidden West and compiled all of that into a comprehensive resource that hopefully will answer any of your remaining questions. I also think it's noteworthy to point out the fact that despite generally being regarded as a major improvement over its predecessor Zero Dawn, with some outlets even calling it a perfect sequel, Forbidden West has scored very similarly in the aggregated reviews for some reason, so we're gonna explore that idea in this video as well. And this also brings us to the first improvement that comes in the form of the game's main narrative. No spoilers here, just like overall impressions, once again Aloy takes on the challenging quest to save the world with the events in the Forbidden West quickly following up after the story concluded in Zero Dawn and specifically after its DLC. The first First few hours in the Forbidden West are slow and might even be off-putting to players unfamiliar with the lore in the first game, but will quickly pick things off as you reach into the new zones of the Forbidden West. In her journeys filled with mystery, new characters and numerous new threats, Aloy will be hit with lots of twists and plot turns that most of the reviewers came to appreciate as few key ones were completely unexpected. IGN in particular noted that Guerrilla Games has definitely learned from their past mistakes in the first game when it comes to balancing world building with coherent storytelling. As such, while much of the lore in Zero Dawn was seen or better yet heard through the many audio logs it seems to have felt victim to, this time around the story's key moments transpire through engaging cutscenes and well acted character dialogues. All in all, it's generally agreed by the reviewers that the main narrative of Horizon Forbidden West does an excellent job to create meaningful relationships with the various minor and major characters through key moments that makes it feel like you're not just running around doing errands, but rather saving a world that you, or should I say Aloy, deeply cares for. And this brings us to the quality of the side quests, another huge point for Forbidden West. Even the most harsh of the reviewers have agreed that the side quests in the Forbidden West are infinitely more engaging than the ones in Zero Dawn, offering compelling side stories, unforgettable characters, and great new rewards. Games Radar, for example, notes that every single person or side character you end up interacting with feels unique and there's a likeness to them that almost compels you to help them every single time. Side stories are no longer reduced to uninspired fetch quests, but rather have their own intricate backstories, oftentimes intertwined with the main narrative and you never know where this will bring you next. It definitely seems that Guerrilla Games have taken a page of that Witcher 3 book as multiple outlets have pointed out before. The quality of the side quest is further emphasized by the improvements the dialogue screen, voice acting, gestures and facial animations that now give the actors the possibility to convey a lot more emotion through their work. Even more satisfying is the fact that almost every single side quest in the game ends up providing a very powerful reward, sometimes even a must-have upgrade that you will definitely want in your adventures. This also brings us to number 3, which is the open world and many of its distractions. Forbidden West isn't just more ambitious than Zero Dawn, it's also much larger and packed with a lot more content, side content included. It's obvious that 5 years difference between the two games has brought major improvements both visually and aesthetically. Now the main narrative takes 20 plus hours to complete, but obviously there's a lot more to do in the game besides that, with a ton of new objectives and things to do on the map. The game features multiple biomes and distinct locations, even more so than ever before, but also a lot more attention to detail in every single thing. This is most noticeable in the clusters of civilizations scattered around the Forbidden West, with settlements appearing way more lively than ever before and a lot more dynamic. You'll likely revisit many of the previous visited locations just to see exactly how much they evolved or how many new quests they might pop up for you. A 
Aimlessly wandering around the environment is also very rewarding, with many side activities, secret relic ruins, and bonus encounters providing a good distraction when not actively trying to save the world. The Pullcaster and the Shield Wing prove to be a much needed addition in this day and age, and especially so helps the Forbidden West with its much more improved scale up, but also at solving environmental puzzles. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said about the climbing system and this seems to be regarded as one of the weaker points. While it's true it is a major improvement over the rather limited version in Zero Dawn, it still feels rather restrictive by 2022 standards, as most reviewers noted that other games like Breath of the Wild, Assassin's Creed, or even more recent open world entries have pretty much removed many of the restrictions a long time ago and provided much more needed freedom for players to explore the world the way they see fit. Another slightly underwhelming part of the game is the newly added skill tree system. Now, this of course has changed quite a bit compared to the first game, as it now seems to appear a lot more elaborate and expanded upon with six different new skill lines that will give you a lot of new options. Unfortunately, many of those options were regarded as being uninspired, as they mostly revolve around passive bonuses. There are active abilities in there, but many reviewers, including Games Radar, have remarked that there were times when they completely skipped upon using any of the accumulated skill points simply because there were no meaningful unlocks left in sight. That's not to say that these won't come into play later on in the end game or on higher difficulties when min-maxing builds becomes a lot more important and every passive increase will yeah, mean a lot against some of the tougher encounters that you will start seeing, especially since the game does feature challenge arenas, powerful enemies especially in the end game and even more so online leaderboards where a lot of these things will probably count. And of course this also brings us to combat. Now combat has also seen many improvements over the first game but overall it should feel quite familiar to most of the returning players. With the introduction of new weapons, ammo types and the valor search system this gives you a new edge over the enemies and new ways to tackle combat and this should also make up for a more satisfying and flexible result. It also helps that the game now features features a lot more machines and variations than ever before, including many returning ones from the previous game. Taking down enemies requires as much patience and planning as before, and the game provides additional tools to mark down weak points and other ways to turn the tide to your advantage. One such new tool is the spike thrower, which lets you throw spikes at the enemies and detonate after a short while, becoming almost a necessity against some of the larger machines in the game. It's also noteworthy that the value surges are extremely important, though not all in an equal way. Some of them might be amazing when fully upgraded at dealing damage or just taking down enemies really easily, but others will give you elements of strategy, including one that provides a temporary cloaking device that will pretty much render you almost invisible to machines, giving you better opportunities to ambush unsuspecting enemies. But despite all of these improvements, there are still some drawbacks here being noted, one being the fact that the game simply just throws way too many ammo and weapon types at you to the point that in the end game it becomes a little bit too convoluted and it might feel that some of these are really unimportant to the point that many of you might think that a lot of these systems are too much of a hassle to keep track of. Personally, I think that in the end this is a matter of personal choice, I can totally see some of the hardcore fans enjoying the added liberty and flexibility when it comes to choosing your options, but at the same time I can also see some of the casual players feeling a little bit more frustrated by the nuisance of having so much stuff to handle at the same time. Also, let's talk about another cool addition in the Forbidden West, which of course is something taken from a really great series, which is the Mass Effect inspired base of operation. Now this game features its own hub slash base of operation feature, kind of like Normandy except it's in an old world facility, which is repurposed to house both old and new characters that you meet up during the events of the main story and others as such. You can bring these characters and even have them at your base permanently, which yeah, further opens up new ways to find out more about them, including through dialogues, cool interactions, banter, 
and obviously new side quests. In fact, quite many of them will provide new distractions like new side quests and even help you out in your journeys. There's also another one added that is an inspiration from Witcher, which is of course the Gwent inspired mini game called Machine Strike, which yeah, according to the aggregated reviews, it seems to be quite interesting, though of course probably not on the same fun level as the previous one. Despite all of that, it's a strategy board game that was noted to contain addictive qualities and seem to be impressively deep to keep you interested at least for a few moments. So this is again something that will boil down to personal preference. In the graphics and performance department, which is the last bit that I wanted to cover, the game, especially on the PlayStation 5, has been regarded to be nothing short of absolutely gorgeous. On the new gen especially, the game features a fully native 4K resolution at a rather stable 30 FPS. But players can also opt up for a performance mode that boasts 60 FPS at an 1800p resolution, which I think many new gen users will appreciate. The game is also nothing short of a miracle on the old gen as well, specifically on the base PlayStation 4. It's capable of featuring a good solid 30 FPS, but with a checkerboard 1080p. PS4 Pro, on the other hand, already has a massive improvement over it, also because of the much better hardware with a much sharper image quality and better resolution scaling compared to the default PlayStation 4. The same cannot be said about the performance and some of the bugs before the release, with many reviewers pointing out the fact that there were multiple technical issues, from texture pop-ups all the way up to animations getting stuck. But of course, since this was lacking day one patch, it's likely going to get a massive improvement upon release, so again, it's probably something that you're not going to care too much by that point. Now, overall, I'd say that the final score boils down to mostly what Horizon Forbidden West doesn't do rather than what it does. I find it quite funny, and I've even noted this earlier on Twitter, that the game is regarded to be an evolution over Zero Dawn in every single conceivable way, yet it scored exactly the same as its predecessor. And I think that that has something to do with the fact that the Guerrilla Games team didn't really innovate anything in this regard. Not that it needs to, not every single game that comes out needs to innovate every single time, especially when it doesn't need to, and even more so since innovative ideas rarely feel right from the very beginning and could require a few iterations before they nail them right. Yeah, the game looks just solid, it's a fun and complete experience which I think most of the users will come to appreciate and probably another banger for Sony nonetheless, but totally let me know down below what is your take on these views and what parts of these reviews have made you more or less excited for Horizon Forbidden West. This is it, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.